Hello, I'm Jameis Stiver with 8150 Handbuilt Wheels. I'm here to discuss and talk to you about force specific lacing. It's our patented technology that we will use exclusively while lacing our wheels here at 8150. There's several different components to sport specific lacing. The first one is what we call PME, stands for Power Management Efficiency. I'm using different gauge spokes for different jobs that the wheel do, that the wheel does. So um, half the spokes on the wheel propel the bike, the other half slow it down. And I've identified which spokes do those specific duties. And the ones that I have slowing the bike down, I increase the tensile strength. I use a fatter, thicker gauge spoke, and I accompany that with a brass nipple, which is stronger than an aluminum. And the spokes that propel the wheel, which aren't under as much rigorous force, I'm able to thin out and use double butted, thinner spokes, lighter weight, and I accompany those with aluminum nipples. It allows me to be strong where we need to be strong. Um, through my uh, research, the spokes that were breaking that I was constantly changing as a mechanic were always the ones that were taking the duties of brake force. I recognize that uh, by studying the wheel and studying which way the spokes are twisted and pulled on. This is how we came up with force-specific lacing. Another component of force-specific lacing besides power management efficiency is minimal brake force deflection. And that's a technique that uh, utilizes which side of the hub flange I lay the spokes that take the braking force, which have the most significant amount of force added to them. And I study their lean angle and I minimalize their leverage advantage on the wheel. So under intense braking, the wheel wants to stay more centered. If you're not familiar with the phenomenon and what's going on with bicycle wheels. Um, these wheels we ride are all dished, meaning the spokes aren't coming at off the hub at equal angles. So instead of a perfect triangle, one side scooted in to make room for the cassette on the rear wheel, it gets scooted on the other side uh, to make room for the disc on the front wheel, which makes the wheel want to center itself when you twist, twist the hub dramatically. So the traditional bicycle wheel was being slowed down by a rim brake, the friction of the rubber pads on the rim. The wheel was never being twisted. Now that the rotor is attached to the hub, now the spokes take all the braking force. 32 spokes in the wheel, 16 of them take the force for braking. Eight of them are on this side of the hub, eight of them are on this side. Power management efficiency, what I've done, if you can see this wheel, I have black spokes and silver spokes in there. And although that looks really cool, and it's unique that I'm lacing the wheel with different colored spokes. I've done this so I can help explain my wheels to people uh, by once they see the color difference, they can see, oh yeah, I do see that these spokes angled in this direction are all black. And those are the ones getting twisted on when you twist the hub with the brake rotor, vice versa. Here's the cassette. When you twist it forward, it's pulling on the silver spokes. They're the lighter weight ones, aluminum. The brakes are triple butted DT Swiss Alpine threes made for tandems e-bikes and downhill bikes. So this is a wheel that's built for downhill. So I have a lot of them littered. The formula changes depending if you're cross country, enduro, downhill, but the all wheels have mixed spokes, different gauges in them. One other thing as a wheel company, cause we're into the complete wheels, tires, all that on how we roll. Um, but as far as the rim, 8150 does showcase a, a unique rim. What's unique about this carbon rim, and we're talking carbon here, is there's a new term in the industry called vertical compliance which was a term I've been talking about for a while, except I called it tensile strength compression ratio. Same thing, the idea is when riding my first set of carbon wheels, which had a very deep profile, covered in a lot of distance, the rim was very stiff because of the shape. From the start, I was thinking, man, this rim could be softer and won't maybe be so harsh for off-road riding. On the road, in the velodrome, when you want stiff, energy efficient transmission, you're getting it. But for off-road, we want things to flex and bend and move to do a couple things. One, that equals traction. Two, equals durability. And we want both of those things for off-roaders. So what we have here is a shallow rim. If you look at the profile, in addition, I have them three millimeters offset drilled to help the wheel become less dished and more symmetric. And so what we have here is a wheel that's able to actually, under a big strike, become unround, go egg-shaped, and then come back. Now also, and able to do that phenomenon, the wheel can't be strung so tight that it doesn't want to move. So 8150 wheels aren't laced to the maximum tension recommended by the rim companies. We're taking it a little softer. A lot of people got to remember that number on the rim that says what Newton meter you should be stringing them up to, that's the max. You're not supposed to go over that. You're allowed to go under it. So we do. Uh, my front wheels are laced softer than the rear because the front wheel has less weight on it for the typical part of the ride. If you got your suspension set up right and your tire pressure correct, that all can be handled. So that's what we got going on, soft flexible rims that grip and rip.